We're on the tail end of our stewardship time together, where we've had a series of three sermons. Uh, You've heard a sermon about talent from George. Talent is about facing the reality that God built you fearfully and wonderfully. You were built with a purpose, and you are part of the meaning of this world. God has planned good things through you, through the work of the Holy Spirit and the talent that he has given you. Then we heard about the stewardship of treasure from Pastor Tyler. And Pastor Tyler talked about many things, but really the stewardship of treasure is about God giving you every day what you need to exercise your talent. God provides for you your daily bread so that you can fulfill his will in your life. That is what the stewardship of treasure is. To recognize that God is the one blessing. That God has built you with talents so unique to you. And that you have purpose and meaning. And every day God provides you with the means to fulfill his will in your life. So. We have the talent, we've got the treasure, now we need one last component for stewardship, and that's time. Now I don't really look at it as time though. You know, I I showed the kids this watch, and I did buy it because I needed to be on time wherever I went. Time is money, tick tock, tick tock. The more I'm sitting in a meeting, the less chance I have of fulfilling a sale somewhere out in the world. I needed to fulfill a sale so that my family could eat. And so I needed to be on time. I needed to to be exactly where I needed to be when I needed to be there. But the more I spend time with family, the more I spend time in ministry, I'm realizing that this is absolutely worthless. Time means absolutely nothing. When we came here today at 9 o'clock... Nine o'clock. Was that the most important thing about our morning? That we got here at nine o'clock? Most of us. Or is it that you're here worshiping today? Time means nothing. To an eternal soul, time is irrelevant. It has to do with where you are, not when you are. Are you here with me today? Are you here worshiping with me today? Or are you thinking about the Husker game? Are you here with me right now? Are you thinking about lunch? Are you here with me right now? Are you looking at the clock? Are you here with me right now worshiping? Are you thinking about life's troubles and the demands of the world around you? Are you here with the church body worshiping this morning? You see, the the stewardship of time is a third commandment issue. Honor the Sabbath. It is a daily bread issue in our Lord's Prayer. Daily bread. God has given you today, and that's it. It is given daily, and bread equals life. We are to remember our past, We are to be mindful of our future, but God has given you today and we are to live today. I have no idea whether you will make it home today from church. I have no idea if you will even wake up tomorrow. But I do know God has given you right now, this very day, the talent, the treasure, and the presence to be here worshiping today. The most important gift that could ever be given when it comes to time is how we spend it. So today, we're going to take a look at where we must go every single day in order to live And that is in God's word. 
We're going to go right back to the basics and turn our ear to God and learn what that means because stewardship depends upon us realizing that the daily bread given to us every day comes through the word proclaimed to us in our time with God. If that isn't in place in our very, every, very, every, very, every, very day of our life, then we will fall short. Let's take a look. When we listen to the Word of God, when we take that time during our given day, there are three really incredible benefits that we get, and it comes right upon us. When we turn our ear to God, when we listen to Him and to His Word, the first thing it does is create something new from the old. I want everyone to listen up. There is nothing inside of you. There is not anything inside of you that says Jesus is alive. There is nothing inside of you that says prayer does anything. There is nothing inside of you that says there is life after death. There is nothing inside of you that would scream the church does any good. Hmm. We read in Matthew eleven twenty five through 27, as a matter of fact, that this is hidden and revealed. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the Lord and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by the Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son. And to those to whom the Son chooses to reveal to Him. Through the Word, we are transformed. Through the Word, through hearing the external Word, something inside of us changes. You see, the Holy Spirit's work is to take Jesus Christ, this historical Jesus from Golgotha, where He was nailed to the cross, and to bring Him to us today. To make him alive for us. This is done through the external word that changes us on the inside. The work of the Holy Spirit takes this, these dead words on a piece of paper. that were written hundreds of years ago. And brings them to us alive. So that they are real and vibrant in our life. And if we do not turn our ear to God every single day. then we remain the same. But when we do, God takes the old and makes something new out of it. He molds us and creates us and keeps us moving toward Him. You see how this word is at work in our lives through 1 Thessalonians 2.13. And so we also thank God continually because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you did today, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is at work in you who believe. Now, we still have the flesh around our neck, don't we? We know we're not fully recovered yet, and Jesus' second return has been delayed by his own choosing. But we are renewed as we begin to co-operate with God through the hearing of his word making us into something new every single day, molding us. And so we turn our ear to God to learn. Not only when we take the time to be a good steward and we turn our ear to God during the day, it also builds a relationship. You see, we are contended for. I'm not in the business of testing and challenges. I just am not, especially in faith. But I want to give you a challenge here today. And this has nothing to do with salvation, because salvation is by faith alone, apart from works. But I want to give you all a challenge. See whether you pick it up or not. For the next two weeks, I would like you to read one chapter out of the Gospel of John every day, out loud. Read the Ten Commandments out loud. Read the Apostles' Creed out loud. And read the Lord's Prayer out loud. Every day for the next 14 days. The next two weeks. 
I like to do it out loud because it makes you mindful of where you are. Gives you an intent and purpose about what you're doing. For the next two weeks, do that. You know how long that takes? Five minutes to read the Gospel of John and five minutes for the Ten Commandments, Apostles, Creed, and the Lord's Prayer. Ten minutes of your day. You would think that ten minutes of our day, if we are Christian and are, are, are so dependent upon the very breath of God that we would take ten minutes, right? That should be easy. Well, I ask you to do this so I can show you because it's a great way of finding out who is lording over you, who is contending for you and grabbing you. For there are many lords in this world, lowercase, and they are screaming for your attention. They are screaming to, for, for you to spend time with them. The television. I don't know, we have all sorts of different lords out there. A lord is anything that has power or influence over you. Try just 10 minutes a day for the next two weeks to do that, and you will hear those lords screaming at you, wanting you to quit and to go their way. The stewardship of time is about turning our ear to God so that we may recognize our talents and our treasure. You know, if you want to build a relationship with someone, what do we do? We spend time, right? Normally we talk. We send notes. We do things together. And that's what this new relationship happens every single day when we listen to the word. We see this in Psalm 40, 1 through 8. You've heard me before say the Holy Spirit draws us up out of the dungeon to the work of Christ. Well, here it is, Psalm 40. 2, he lifted me out of the slimy pit. Out of the mud and the mire, he, he lifted this poor believer up out of the mire of the mess that he was in. And he did this because this believer daily cried out to God, meditated upon his word, and God answered. It's just amazing to me. And we read in verse 6 how he did this. He lifted them out because my ears you have pierced. This believer was brought out of the mire and the muck because he heard the words of God. This one says out of the scroll or the law, it is the word. And when we hear this word, when we meditate on it, when we build this relationship back and forth, it does lift us up. It drags us out of the mire and brings us to life every single day. Not only does it take something old and make something new, not only does it build a relationship with us, but it also truths and justifies us every day. You hear this blessed man in Psalm 40. You know, I waited patiently for you, Lord. I was in the mire in the muck. But man, because I listened to you, Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, but does not turn to false gods. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you have planned for us. No one can recount to you where to speak and to tell of them. There would be too many to declare. You see, he put a new song in my mouth. He put a new hymn of praise inside of me. i got to tell you, I don't always do the right thing all the time, even as a pastor. And there is nothing like the Word to bring us back to God's will. When we have done wrong, when we have lost our sight to the will of God, we are brought back into alignment with Him. Reminds me of the old nail in the fence post, right? I, I, I've lived on a farm half my life, and when you nail it in there, sometimes they get rusty and they get bent. And instead of buying a new one, you just pull it out, you put it on something flat, and you bend it straight, and you cram it right back into the post. You are trued and justified right back again through the Word of God. You see that in the column of the paper today. You mean look at your own uh, Bibles. It's trued. It is with the will and design of the editor so that the meaning and purpose is perfectly straight and aligned. We have this with God when we turn our ear to Him every single day and we live our life now. Again, 
We are to remember the past. Again, we are to be mindful of the future. But what we do right now drastically changes the past and greatly affects the future. When I decided to be a pastor, everyone around me thought I was insane. Not that I didn't have the ability, but that that was a fool's errand. I was fine where I was. And so in the past, that was chosen as a bad decision. But as I've lived my life in the present, and as God has worked in this congregation and in my life, now people look back and say, well, that wasn't so dumb after all. And it has drastically affected my future. But we must live today because that's all you've got. Let us pray.